it's late. So today I'm excited to say that uh, Nikki has come in to do a little sewing lesson on her tea toweling fabric. So she's gonna show you some tips and tricks, show you some new patterns um, out of the book, and then we'll show you the patterns that we have in stock and show you how awesome this tea toweling fabric is. So um, she's gonna go over some tips and tricks again on the tea toweling fabric. Hello, Julie. Hi, Amy. Um, I do have toweling fabric in. I'm sorry, I'm trying to move my hand here without making you sick. Um, we have toweling in. Uh, I will turn the camera around and let you see the toweling fabric that we have. I'll show you, they're numbered, or nope, those are lettered, and then the patterns are numbered. So if there's anything you wanna claim, I will definitely um, take a picture and put it in the posting when we're done. And then just email us and tell us what you would like, um, uh, how many yards or whatever you're going to do with this toweling. So, and what product you want. So then you would say, okay, I want letter M and two yards. So again, um, we're doing toweling fabric and we're going over um, pieces and of treasure, pieces and treasure, yeah, pieces. I mess it up every time. Pieces. Pieces to treasure. Pieces to treasure. I'm sorry. So this toweling fabric is amazing because you can, it's toweling. So it's nice and soft. It's actually really soft and a nice um, quality. And you can buy yardage. So you're not just limited to a regular tea toweling size, which is really nice. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and I'm gonna put Nikki on. Um, I'm sure she's ready to go. She'll do a little bit of sewing. She'll talk about the pattern. She'll talk about the book. She'll show you the awesome projects she's been working on all week because I called her and said, hey, help me out. So she's amazing. So let me give me two seconds and I'm turning that camera around. Good morning, ladies. How are you? I miss you all. I'm glad to be back in the store and working with some of the new fabrics that have come in. And I have the new book from Janelle Kent that has 13 patterns in it. And I'm gonna show you four of those patterns today. So let's get going, let's do a little sewing and let's get those creative juices flowing this morning. The first one I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna start with the easy one first. And she has an apron and a tea towel that go together. And it's in the book. In the book, like I said, are 13 patterns, I believe. And the whole book is $25.99. And I believe you get your club discount on it. 20% or 15, Alyssa? Uh, 50, uh, 20%, I'm sorry. 20% off the book on top of it. And in here, you will see the apron. Should have put a big bookmark in here. Uh, good morning, ladies. Uh, Nikki, I want you to know everybody's saying hello to you. Good morning, good morning. I miss you all. So here is the apron and the tea towel that goes with it. And I decided we need... Oh, I moved too fast. It's okay. I'm sorry. I'm just zooming sorry, in. Sorry, ladies. I moved too fast. Um, yeah, this is the okay. And I made my tea towel out of... Uh, khaki fabric and decided to go with the red and the white and the blue for the holiday that's coming up that I'm thinking we're going to really enjoy this year. I trimmed it with a piece of ribbon and what is a little different about this one is it is double applique. So she had you cut this piece five by five and then trim it down and she had you cut this piece seven by seven and then trim it down. And I appliqued it this on first. First it was put it in your embroidery machine and her instructions are wonderful. She lays everything out by sizes and where to load everything. And here is the towel. And she gives you the design to use. And then I just went to my embroidery machine and put in the alphabet and put Bon Appetit in. The heart I found with the font I was using was a little bit too big, so I skipped the heart and trimmed out in rickrack to give it a little bit more depth. And on here, I embroidered it down. I put a piece of heat and bond on the back of it. 
and I fused it to the red piece of toweling. And then I put the toweling, she tells you to put it three inches above the bottom so it's nice and evenly spaced. I put it up there. I ran the roll of stitches around to hold it in place. I used the applique stitch on this one. Over here is just a top stitch. And then I decided to put a piece of rickrack around it to give it a more, I thought, finished look to it. The ribbing, ribbon is just a piece of red, white, and blue that I had sitting in my stash. And that was a very easy project to do. And if you were going to a summer barbecue, you could add the apron to it, and it makes a great little hostess gift when you're taking it in. So that was the first project I did out of this book. I liked it a lot. I thought it was, it, the book is extremely well written, very good illustrations, very good directions on marking all of the fabrics. It tells you exactly how to put the apron together. It tells you how much to turn your raw edges in. And the great thing to me about tea toweling is it comes in about a 16 inch wide piece and then you can cut it at whatever length you want. So if you wanted a towel that's 30, cut off 30 inches of toweling. If you wanted uh, just a little short towel to flip over a, a refrigerator handle, just cut it in a 15, 18 inch piece and go with it that way. So it's really limitless what you can do with this. Uh, you have many, many choices. It comes in many, many colors. We have a lot of neutrals here in the red, white, and blue. We have some khaki thrown in. We have black, which is very, very rich. And we also have the Aurora Sewing Center colors where we've got the green and the blue put together. So that was the first pattern I worked on. And that doesn't really take a whole lot of explanation as far as what's going on with that. The second project I did, and I went a lot different than her, is I thought this table runner on the cover was beautiful. So I decided I wanted the table runner. But what she does a lot of is hand embroidery. So all of her stems, all of her lines around her berries, and all of the little dots that are around there are French knots, hand embroidered, chain stitch, hand embroidered, and a back stitch. And I thought there's got to be a way to get around this because that's a lot of extra work and time. So, uh, table runner. Okay. All right. Amy, yes, you can order just the toweling. I will um, zoom over there in a little bit and show you what we have. And I will also post a picture um, in the comments when we're done so you can see which one you would like. And then just email us, um, info at aurorasewingcenter.com, or you can email me, Alyssa M at aurorasewingcenter.com, and I will fill your order. Hi, Amy. So in this table runner, I did not want to do all that hand applique. So what I did was I picked a decorative stitch that looked closest to the chain in my machine. And it is, I use the baby lock machines. I have the destiny and you have oodles and oodles of choices to do. And then when I needed to put the little spiky things coming off of the flowers, the berries, I used a triple stitch with that. And then I'm like, what am I going to do for French knots? And I looked through the whole machine. I looked at buttonhole parts and everything and I couldn't find any. And I said, let's get out the embellisher and let's embellish with some rhinestones and really give it a little sparkle. So that's what I did to these. And some of them, she leaves plain. I'm going to zoom in on the picture in the book. It's hard to, there you go. So that's what she did. That's the hand embroidery with her French knots and all that fun stuff that Nikki's talking about. And I went this way. And Nikki did hers on the machine. Saves a whole lot of time doing it that way. Saves a whole lot of carpal tunnel. <laughs> So that is what I did with this one. And I just thought, and all of this is, is a simple flip. So all you gotta do is hem it. And flip and hide that raw edge. So if you had a huge table, let's say. 72 inches. 72 inches or even larger. 
You can make this table runner as long as you need because all you have to do is buy the yardage off the roll. Absolutely. And if I was making one that long, I would then find the center of the fabric and put one running this way. So I would have one at each end and one in the center. And it would really accent your table very, very nicely. And because it is a toweling fabric, so easy to wash. So if it was an outside affair and you were putting this on the picnic table, don't worry about throwing this fabric in the washing machine. It washes beautiful. It's just like your kitchen towel. So that is how what I would do with this if I was doing one that was that long to cover a picnic table. I would throw one right in the middle going this way. And I think it would accent it beautiful. Or embroider for the July, happy fourth or something like that in the center. Because to me, with using the, the rhinestones on here, I feel it looks more like fireworks than I do flowers. So I would go that way with it. What you didn't bring today is Nikki made um, a quilt with using the toweling, which I have the pattern, we don't have the sample, but what the great thing is she talked about using it as um, like a throw on the ground when she goes, to a picnic or watch the fireworks or anything. It's really cute. And it's all done in 4th of July too because I used the red and white fabrics and then in the center of the squares, I randomly, I didn't put one in every center, but I put like maybe two in each roll and I embroidered different objects that were related to the 4th of July. And I think this year being what we're all going through, the 4th of July is going to be quite big and I think we're going to be very strong and very supportive of our USA. So I really think the red, white, and blue is important this year. And you'll see, all of my stuff is done in red, white, and blue. I just love those colors. Amy, I'm going to show you the patterns and the toweling in the comments in a little bit. And actually, I'll zoom over there. I just don't want to jump to the other side of the room. So give me a few minutes. <laughs> okay, so after I did that, in this book, they call it a laundry bag. Um, they call it the travel laundry bag. I would, this to me is not a laundry bag. Could it be? Yes, it can. But again, I think this makes for a cute little sack when you're going out somewhere and you want to be patriotic. So I used some of the fabrics and it's very, very, very easy. This is all one piece. That's just one piece of toweling fabric. One piece wow. Of toweling. You cut a circular. I brought the template with me. What am I doing here? Well, anyhow, I cut a circular piece for the bottom. She tells you how to ease it in there. And then this is just one big piece of toweling, is all this is. The hardware is from. Sally Tomato. Sally Tomato. And all you really needed was the D-ring there. And I loaded that in. And it just calls for a simple roping to run through a casing on both sides. I totally lined it. Wow. Shar wants to know if you brought any treats for us today. Oh, I'd love to. Hi, Shar. I can't wait for that to come back. I call you guys my ladies, and I really miss my ladies. Denise, if I use the microphone in here like we do at club, it echoes because it's not coming out of her mouth. It's into a speaker that's behind me, so it doesn't it doesn't work the way you we think it would. Okay, so this is a very nice project. Would I use this for a laundry bag? Absolutely not. Would I use this as a cute little tote bag? I would love to do that. You could throw a beach towel in here. You could throw in some picnic essentials that you need to take. You could even put that quilt in there because it's just a little flat top type quilt to sit on and watch the fireworks in with a few snacks in the bag. And you'd have it all in one bag, not necessary to take a whole bunch of different things with you. So I loved this. This was my new favorite piece. I brought this with me stole it from the other store. This was my favorite bag originally. Um, we had a class on it. Very nice to do all of this. It's attaching the vinyl that really gets to be a pain in the butt. But it is a simple project to do. 
and I added the embroidery here. So if you had this bag for the beach and this bag filled with your goodies, your goodies, your, your blanket, you and some other things. A perfect ensemble for going out for the day for the 4th of July or any day during the summer. And we talked about this the last time. And I have seen it done in other waves now. And this is being done more for Christmas and turning this into poinsettias. And they're putting this all on a white table uh, background of tea toweling. And then they're doing the leaves and the berries in greens and reds. Stunning, absolutely stunning. The birds could then be done in a little bit of a, a red color, but use some metallic thread to bring it out into a, very much into a Christmas atmosphere. And again, this stuff here, all of her detail work here, she does by hand embroidery. As you can see, I'm not the best quilter around, but you have to get into kind of a free motion to get those designs in there. Um, I think I used the triple stitch on that too, if I'm not mistaken. Applique, the biggest thing with an applique stitch and what I advise, and I tell this to everybody, is the open toe foot taught me so very, very much about applique and lets you enjoy what you're doing. If you used a closed foot, like what's on the machine here, you can't see clearly. This is either the J or the N. I think it's the J. And you can't see well. And you want to be able to see where you're going so you can ride that foot right along the edge of this applique piece that you're putting down. Now, she had you making bias binding for this. I personally didn't do that the first time. I bought a package of pre-made binding to make, see if that would work. And it does work, but I would not hesitate now to use a, to make my own bias binding and put this down. You will get a much easier curve out of your bias binding because it's so much lighter than what you buy when you buy it in the package. And it's more pliable and will move easy. One of the big, things she is into is birds and all kinds. She goes from birds down here to birds up here to roosters over there. She is just very country. Her, the name of her book is Farm Fresh or Farmhouse rather. She is just into basic country decor. You won't find her doing a whole lot of intricate pieces. She doesn't do that type of work, but her applique work is explicit and she has your designs in here to trace that are really easy. The only thing that I have found with her is that she doesn't reverse. So you need to reverse it. And that's where our lights come into handy very much so because it will shine through when you flip this page over and you're able to trace it. You're talking about the slim line wafer one, wafer. two, and three, the wafer yes. lights. That's what Nikki's talking about. They are a great investment. Are they a little bit pricey? A little, not bad. If you're into your applique work, you want to purchase something like that. Um, you will use it often. You'll get your money's worth out of it. And I highly recommend that one because it comes with a bulb that ha you won't use it in your lifetime. Um, it has a coating on it of Teflon. So you can then even take your little uh, irons and put it on top of your pressing cloth, on top of the glass, and you will do no damage whatsoever. The price of the book was what again? The price of the book is $25.99. $25.99, Joyce. 20% off and 13 patterns. And she lists them all in the beginning, tells you where to go to. There's pictures of most of them in here. And her instructions, as you can see, are beautiful instructions. All color coded. All her dimensions are put onto the designs. 
The only thing you need to be careful with her is she does not reverse her designs. But a lot of that has to do with because she does so much hand work where we're tracing and putting it down on things. So we need to reverse it or it goes in the opposite direction. This one here, you will see my vase is going this way. Oh. Her vase is going that way. Is it hard to do? Absolutely not. And did it affect this? Absolutely not. What it will affect is if you put a pumpkin together, the pieces don't fit. So you need to reverse it to get mm. the pumpkin to look in that direction. And I did that and I just reversed all of the pieces and then traced it on the paper side of my heat and bond light. And then remember when you cut it out, leave yourself about a quarter of an inch in between your pieces Put it on the wrong side of your fabric, iron it in place, and then cut on the line. And then you will have a perfect fit to get all your pieces to go together. And this is this down here. I see that you numbered them so I you do. knew. So I know the order they go in. And on my pattern at home, I have them numbered on the pattern so that I know exactly where they're going. And it keeps everything straight when you get into a lot of, because these pumpkins have five pieces in each pumpkin. Oh, wow. Okay. So you want to make sure you have them numbered or color coordinated or a symbol, a star on one and X on another, just so you know where what, it is. What goes going. where? What goes where? It's a puzzle. Putting it together is a puzzle. My last project and one of the ones that I, did we do all this? Yeah, we did all this. One of the ones that I really liked is everybody is making these casserole holders. So I have made it, I've put it together. This one here is just a tea towel that I picked up in the store here and the, in the small check. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I did this backwards. And I didn't realize it till I went to put this together. The fold of the fabric should have been up here because now I've made an extra step for myself. This is not a finished edge, so I need to put a piece of binding, a straight edge binding on here, which is not a big deal, but that is how you have to do it, is you'll have to put a piece of binding because I have all of my raw edges here where you stick your hands in. So I have to put the binding on. And what they have told you to do with this is to use A binding that's cut on the diagonal so that it will curve easily and one of the different things she did too was she had you cut this three inches where we're used to cover cutting two and a quarter to two and a half but she had you cut three because you are going through many many thicknesses here she recommended the wool batting oh wow she had you use insel bright and then you've got your backing. So you've got backing, Ansel Bright, batting, the tea towel. Then she had you the backing, the front, and you put Ansel Bright in there too. So you're not gonna get burnt using this at all. But she did make you use, told you to use a three inch. So I will attach that to the back and then you have plenty of room to bring that over onto the front. And I picked up the gray to, to tie in with the stripe. But see, now I'm going to be binding this down here. And if you see this, this is my fold. She has you cut these nine inches by 16 inches and fold it. And when you do that, this should be on top and this should be on the bottom so that that edge would have been finished. Totally my mistake didn't read through the entire pattern before I did it. We all do that. We always know more than the pattern sometimes. Yeah. Well, this time I didn't. And the nice thing is that she had you put a loop on here so you can hang that. And it'll look really cute hanging or off a 
something if you're going to use it out by the grill to take hot stuff off the grill if you're cooking if you've got a pan or something on the grill or aluminum foil that you've wrapped veggies in and you you cook those up on the nikki grill. we're going to need that for the events what are we going to need one of those pot holders for our events so when we touch those hot pans we don't burn ourselves oh are we going back to events soon oh soon i don't know that's up to the president and our <laughs> governor and i don't know who else um the question was maybe use a jean needle I, because of all that thickness do you absolutely. think absolutely i had a 90 in mine and it went through fine a 90 universal yes okay yes and it'll go through but it's it's slower i had my um walking foot on also the the big mm -hmm. with the destiny and it worked well but yes, but please girls, don't make extra work for yourself. Remember to put the fold on the top. When I was putting the rest of it together last night, I went, oh crud, I messed that up. Yeah, and I can see why now, but at the time I wanted the blue down here, not up there, and I did my thing. We always do our thing. That's called a discovery. It's never wrong. You just, just made new discoveries. Any questions on the old stuff that we've done or the new things that we're doing? The beach bag that's over. That's a pattern, correct? It is. Did I bring it over there? It's the called the, it begins with a B. Yeah. Okay. Um, Let me, I'm walking over. I'm sorry. Kim, we are essential um, business. That's why I'm allowed to have employees in here, but we're still uh, keeping the doors locked and not, not in the store. So we are essential. Um, but we are not allowing customers in at this time. It'd be really hard to limit how many people come in. That means we're standing by the door and being directors and, you know, it, it just, you know, we're trying to make it easy. Um, we all have families that we have to go to and I, you know, would like to keep it safe when I get home. So my family's safe when I get there. But we are open for business, meaning curbside pickup, just call, place an order. You, We have stuff online that you can see all the fabrics that we have on there, needles, thread. So if you need anything, um, we are doing curbside pickup. Uh, we also will ship for a fee. So keep that in mind. We're, we'll still give you whatever you need. We'll, we'll take care of you. Okay, so here is the toweling fabrics. Um, I have them all and I'm gonna go slow. So you can look at all that we have in stock. You see some uh, fabrics are favored over others. Mm -hmm. Alyssa, the black one looks really pretty when you put the pumpkins on it for Halloween with the orange and the cream. Ooh, so the black one Nikki's saying, um, would it, this one is beautiful uh, for like the Halloween themed ones. This is the one that looks like our store colors. Then we have plain white. We have beige with some tan lines in there. Some denim. So I will post these pictures um, for, you know, in the comments so you can remember the numbers or the letters of the products so you can place an order. How much do you use for one towel? How much is used for one towel? The width is 16 to 17 inches wide, so that is perfect. And a tea towel will run about 28 inches long so you would need about 28 inches of the toweling three, quarters three quarter okay so a little less than three quarters um of a yard for you to just use it as a towel um i had another question but let me find it i'm sorry what stabilizer is used for toweling fabrics there there is no no, stabilizer. no stabilizers because the the toweling fabric is finished on the front and the back the only time you're really going to want to put a backing on something is when you applique, I will put a backing on this so that none of these stitches show when they're on the table. But if this was a tea towel, I would just trim that up nicely and leave it like that. Could you want to grab your red one and show them how, that you, what you... This one here, she has a different way of doing a backing. And it's a great system this is cut i think this is 17 and this is cut 15 and then she has you bring this over because this is a finished edge here 
and then she tells you, I didn't want stitches going through, but I think I could have, and it would have blended all right. I hand sewed my backing on, and I just did a little whip stitch. Um, and it looks like I missed trimming in a few places. But that is how she has you do it. That is her way of backing. And so technically there is no binding. She takes that extra inch and pulls it over to the back. Oh, I like that. I could do that. The price of the fabric is, I think, between $7.99 and $9.99. So it just depends on which, which style one? and which one you pick. Um, the question is, what about when you embroider a design? What stabilizer do you use? I'm going to tell you my favorite, and it may not be what everybody would recommend, but I love Sticky Back. So I use Perfect Stick. Um, a little more expensive than a tearaway is, but nothing moves. And that's what I like the most about it. And on here, that's what I used. I put a Sticky Back in my hoop. I plopped that in the middle, found the center plop that in the middle of my hoop, and then just let it embroider out. Erlinda, when I am done, um, I will take a picture in the comments of the toweling and the patterns, and then just email us at info at aurora.com and place your order. Just say uh, letter A, two yards, this, that, the other thing, and then also um, give us your name, your phone number, and your address so we can cash you out, and then we'll ship it out probably um, tomorrow morning. So again, if you're going to place an order, I will show you um, the fabrics and the patterns in a picture in the comments, and then you just email us your order. So we, it's easier if you place your order through email or phone call. We are getting text messages, Facebook messages, emails and I'm we're, between Scott and I we're getting lost we're double calling people double cutting not filling so the best is email us and that or call the store and then we will take care of you okay and if you put any kind of a, a embellishment on it I just used a little bit of fray check on the ends of it so that we don't get the raveling going on looks like I missed a little spot here and then it'll just keep everything in place. And on a Tito, I do not back. On the back of this, there was um, sticky back on the back of this piece. Sandy, I think our tea, regular tea towels are five ninety nine to six ninety nine. Yes. I, I'm not sure. I don't have those in this video. Where I just have the toweling on the um, by the yardage. I wanted to show you a couple other patterns that are in this book that I thought were kind of interesting. One is in here is a little, oh, it's the one that I put all the cords in for travel. Okay. Well, first I'll show you the tidy tubs because I do know where they are. And this is great for, for putting all of your little accessories in and putting it up on your sewing machine or anything like that. They come in a small, a medium, and a large. Coordinate it with whatever color you've done your sewing room in. They've stuck fabric in here. If you were working with several different fabrics to finish a project, you could put those in there. Your scissors, your rotary cutter, anything on that order can go in these. And they are fully lined also. And then it's a binding that goes around the top. And I have to find this one because I was interested in this. I thought this was really pretty. It's great for traveling and putting your all of your cords in. So they're not hanging in the bottom of your it's, there it is. Oh. And it has a zipper that puts in it and it finishes off looking like this. And this will be the next one that I try. But it's just You've got the little mesh bag that's put in there so you can see what's in there. You've got the elastic run here so you can put your cords through there. And that way when you go in your suitcase, you don't have all your cords intertwined with each other. And then in the zipper pocket, you could put just any kind of little incidentals that are techy that you need to take with you. And that one's called Technology Travel Roll. And it just all rolls up at the end. There it is. 
The book is amazing. And when you consider you get 13 patterns for $25, I think it's really, really mm -hmm. worth the price of the yes. book. Okay, I'm gonna go back over to the fabric. Everyone keeps asking me to show the fabric again or the toweling again, and then the patterns I'll show you. Sorry about the glare, I know that's hard. So those are all the toweling that we have. I know I'm quiet, <laughs> sorry. So this is all the toweling on rolls. These are the colors that we have in stock. Just send us an email of what you want. And then I'll have, um, I'll show you the patterns. I think some of the pretty combinations here, and I will show you a couple if you wanted to put together, is if you took this white and black and mixed, if you were making an apron, especially if you were making it for a guy, and you made your apron, the Ooh. body part of it, out of this, but then trimmed it out in either a gray or the white with the gray and black in it, it would be very masculine. It wouldn't look feminine at all. It would be great for barbecuing. So I think those are three very, very, very nice combinations. Yeah, you, you definitely get. have to have black on the belly. Yeah. Because I know mine gets in the way and I get lots of things lots on of it. Jean, please, <laughs> Jean, just email us what you want, please. Because I can't go back and read all these comments. It's not easy as I would like it to be. So I think that is a very, very pretty combination that you could do. If you, Like I said, if you were doing a patriotic one, you could mix this in and use some of the denim. Mm -hmm. Or you have the stripe over there. Or you have the stripe that matches up very nicely. Mm -hmm. And if you were getting into the darker stripe, it would go that way and be very pretty. And there's nothing to say that you can't do your basic out of this. And then take a tea towel and something that you've got at home or pick a pretty one here. There's tons of beautiful tea towels that are in right now. And... Add your pocket with a tea towel. The Kimberbell, the red and white polka dot accent, so pretty on things. I'm and trying to keep it in order for you oh, guys. Sorry. sorry. No, it's I me. No, no, no. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I just need to, because when I take my picture, <laughs> I don't always know the alphabet. I'll be honest with you guys. I have to sing it. Okay, now I'm going to go to the patterns. So they're numbered. All the patterns are numbered, okay? So number one is the book. That's what Nikki's been talking about. Um, if we have to, if you want it, that's fine. Um, when we call you, we might have to place an order and get more. So just bear with us. But we are, we always can place orders. So don't worry. I do have two here, but I can order more. That's never a problem. This is the one I was talking to you about where you can change up the colors on here and turn this more into a Christmassy theme and use the red and green fabrics to decorate your tea toweling. And here is another one. And Alyssa, I'm sorry, I'm pulling it That's out of okay. order. But this will show you how they did it. In the summer colors, this can almost be oh. a coneflower, a daisy, a anything like that. Then over here, they just change the colors around and it looks like a poinsettia. So just by changing the colors up a little bit, you'll get a totally different look than what that is. This one here is the birds that I was telling you about. And this, I put buttons on the top of mine and I just closed it using the heavy crochet thread and tied them closed. You can put buttonholes in there and finish them off that way. And she has the rooster and the little, I'm gonna call them sparrows. I don't know exactly what they are, but a little everyday bird. Here's more of her birds. Like you, you can see from her theme here, more countryish. She is not into a whole lot of modern. This table runner is adorable, where it's got the rooster in it. That's a fairly new pattern. This is the Halloween one that I was telling you would look really pretty done up. And then adding the white or a cream fabric and an orange. And you can use regular fabric 
to do your accent pieces. You don't need to use all toweling, but use the backing, your long pieces in the toweling. That way you will have your background fabric, I should say, in the toweling, and that way you'll have the strength of this fabric to work with. This is the beach bag. It's called Tawoon. And it's a very easy pattern, very well written. It's that netting at the bottom that you put in and it's not difficult, it's just firm. So it doesn't have the flexibility and when you put the two pieces together, it takes a little time. This is um, the La Grande sack. Oh, yes, that's in the other store. Yep. Yeah. This is the quilt that Alyssa was talking about. It is so easy, and you guys all know, because I tell you all the time, I'm not a quilter. This block is identical. Every block is identical. What she has you do is do a quarter turn. So you take this and turn it a quarter, and then you take the third one and turn it a quarter again. So none of them match next to each other. And then I took the uh, embroidery work and put it in the bigger squares. Wherever there was a bigger square, I put a little piece of embroidery in it. And then this is a so song bird pouch. I think that's good for jewelry and different things like that. Or if you're gonna use it for sewing things, you could take a, if you're going to a friend's house, a couple spools of thread, a couple of bobbins, the, your notions, your smaller notions and throw it in there. Uh, Southampton storage buckets. Those look nice. Now that would be a laundry basket for my house. Yep. The big one, not the small one. To me, that's what they look more like than what's in the book. That is more of a laundry basket. Mm -hmm. Then the lakeside shoulder bag, which um, is really cute. I feel like I've seen that. Um, I don't think we've made that one up yet, but I think that could be, oh, you know where it came from? In her trunk show. When yeah. she sent us the trunk show. Yes. And if you, you can put a long enough strip in there that you can make it a cross body. And that way you don't have to worry about losing it. And then here's the pattern that Nikki was talking about. The one before that looked like Christmas. Mm -hmm. How long is the casserole mitts? I thought um, those were pretty long. I liked that. Cut it um, by 30, nine by 30. You cut it down after you've done your quilting and all she tells you to do is cross hatch or squares or whatever you want to do you cut it down to 17 by 27 so it is a nice length and it'll go around very nicely yes i will put the pattern prices um in the comments um so let me see of course i grabbed the one without a price on it i grabbed the second one without a price on it i think you're right but uh, eleven ninety nine is one that I just picked up, but I will. Eleven ninety nine are the patterns. Oh, 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 Alyssa. Yep, eleven ninety nine are the patterns, like these patterns with the plastic, like a pattern pattern. The book was twenty five ninety nine, and then the toweling ranges between seven ninety nine and I think ten ninety nine, if I'm not mistaken, and at. It depends on the color and the hoop it a hop it a heap it a. So that is um, the price on those things. Any other questions for Nikki? I will be honest. I have learned a lot um, about toweling and also applique. I I really uh, didn't know that you had to reverse it. A lot of your patterns, like when we do tea towel Tuesday, they reversed it for you, and that is okay. What you're there. Okay. So that one is just a matter of tracing it out. I did the silly thing of assuming that all of the manufacturers did that, and that's not true. So when I went to put my pumpkins together, I was like, they don't fit. And that's when I found out if you reverse it, and something as simple as, and I'm going to pull this out Go and show you, as easy as the pumpkin. You just break so you old. break it, you bought it. <laughs> just I'm just kidding. It's Monday, bear with us. This if you take your Sharpie and just go over the lines and then flip it over, it shows through really well and you trace it then. And again, now, the light box. I was just gonna say, so now if you have a light box, what does that mean? What what would you do with that then? For a 
us older people who our eyes are starting to go on us and we get that good cataract stuff, it just brightens everything up and makes it much easier to see. So would you place it down like that on the light box? No, you flip it so and then you first. see it. Okay, that's I'm a visual. Yes. So now, so with that light box, the light shines through and then you see you all see underneath. All so you lines. don't need to darken the lines on that no. with a light box. Okay. The light box, what was what was the light box brand? Slimline. Um, we do have them. We well. I think we have some in stock. If not, I know we've placed orders because we talked about them, um, I think like two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. It could have been. Scott did it. Yep, Scott yes. did it. So um, the they are they are um, amazing product. Okay, uh, show fabric letters again. Okay, here they are. And I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna take pictures and put them in the comments, guys. This one is very pretty. And you could trim this up very nicely with a table runner, especially if you were doing like the vase that I did and put the vase in here and then coordinate some of your flowers with the colors that are in the stripes. That would look stunning. The width of the fabric is 16, 16 17, 17 yeah. inches. The blue and the white is G. I don't know if you guys can see. There we go. Thanks, Nikki. Mm -hmm. And then here's H. This is an I. There's pure white. There's K. That's beige. Denim. Denim. This looks great when you're working into beach bags or laundry bags or anything like that. If you love red, add a little red accent to it. A wider stripe. Not my favorite, but very patriotic. I think this is much cuter and a very nice fabric. Just an FYI, she's the one who picked these out. So I don't know what she's talking about. She told me let her O, so I picked O, so I don't know why she's saying that. In person, that and that are prettier. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Don't worry. I can pick on her. She's my Aunt Nikki. All right, now I'm gonna go to the numbers again with the patterns, just so I go slow. I know there's a glare, I am sorry. We saw, how did we run into this? We, Nikki came to me and said, look at this cool pattern. Oh, this is a six, okay. Look at this pattern. We need to find out. And I said, great, Nikki. Um, you're going to do a club on it. And she goes, well, I don't do clubs. I said, you do now. <laughs> so now I broke her in. And uh, she's she's doing great. I mean, she just did a live video. Oh. I mean, so if you can do a live video, you can definitely sit in front of a bunch of you ladies and uh, teach and do a club. So I'm, I've broken her in. All right, any more questions? When will the tallowing be available on the website? Um, well, if I post, if I take a picture today <laughs> and I send it to my uh, marketing people, I could probably get them to get it up there um, by later this afternoon or even tomorrow or this week. Let me say this week. We've been throwing a lot of things at them, so um, we will definitely have it up there now that it's labeled. Um, that's the problem is having the time to label everything and then sending it over for them to put it up on the website. And send us pictures of your finished product, ladies. I love looking at everything that you're doing. Yeah, on behind really the scenes or even on the Aurora Sewing Center. Yeah, definitely. It's nice. It feels like we are all together. So it's it's nice to um, feel like we're all together doing a sew and share standing up here. And I'm putting them in the kitchen. Uh-oh. See, you all get to keep your product because Nikki's not stealing them and putting in the kitchen or in the closet. All right, I'm gonna flip the camera. Thank you, Nikki. Thank oh, you thank so you. much for coming in and giving us a, a little sewing lesson here. I miss you, ladies. All right, so tomorrow is Tuesday. Um, I probably will be doing something. I don't know what. Wednesday... We have, if I'm not mistaken, somebody should be coming in um, 
And again, I know I say that on a Monday, but as long as everything goes smoothly, that's what happens. So Wednesday, the plan is that Carol is coming. And then um, Tuesday, Thursday is me. And Friday is supposed to be at this time, Eileen. Again, I post as much as I can in the morning on the Aurora Sewing Center Facebook page to let you know what time we're going live. Um, I try and do 11 for the classes, but shopping is all over the place because it depends on how much work I can get done before I go live. If you would see me before, I'm running around with my head chopped off trying to get myself prepared. So, okay, Carol just answered us. Wednesday is Serger Club. Woo! So, Carol will be here Wednesday doing Serger Club. What are we making, Carol? Oh, uh, I'll have to post that later and tell everybody what we're making. Um, and then um, Friday is Eileen. I think that is uh, talking about rulers. So I know a lot of you ladies buy rulers for special things and um, they maybe have been sitting there according to some of Eileen's posts. So she's gonna go over some rulers and uh, how to use them and what you use them for. All right. So thank you everybody for joining us today. This will be on the Facebook page, the Facebook page, our Facebook page, and you can rewatch it as many times as you want. Again, make sure you like us, make sure you share this. Um, it just gets Aurora Sewing Center's name out there more and it's good for the Facebook world. So again, thank you. I will see you tomorrow and have a great afternoon. Bye.